this morning's service was titled Called to Generosity. As a Tosa woman, generosity means easy bele. And I was very curious this morning to know what generosity from a Christian perspective actually is. Could you please elaborate on that for us? So the idea of generosity, I think from the world's perspective, is giving away your money. From a Christian perspective, it is about putting others first. So it's the concept of having the humility of Christ, that you don't only look after your own things, but you look out for the needs of others. So does it include money? It, it will, but it is being mindful of others above yourself and being generous in all of those areas. One of the most interesting things I listened to this morning was the topic about the tithe. And it hit a nail. It hit home, literally. Purely because I could look at my own personal life as Anela, and I was able to see where the challenges are from a tithing perspective. I always look at my income. And I'm like, Lord, I earn 100 rands a month. And from this 100 rands, basically my costs go up to 98 rands, which means I can't make the tithe. I can't make that 10%. And yet sitting there and listening to you talk about what generosity is and what putting God first actually means, I was able to go back and think of ways in which I can take a step and make that 10% tithe based on my own introspection and realization from a financial perspective. But in terms of other people, how can we overcome the hesitance of giving when we feel we do not have enough to give? You use three things that are very important. First, you said it's personal. The second one is you said you earn a hundred rand, shame. <laughs> I don't know how you how you survive on that. Um, and the third is about putting God first. And that's the area that we need to focus. So the, it's the part that I love. In every single area of our lives, we want to honor the Lord. And we want our relationship to be genuine. And we want to be sincere about it. And we believe that God is able to do the impossible. You know, that's the God that we serve. But then, personally, when it comes to money... Then we're like, whoa, whoa. Look, I know God can help in all of these other areas. Like I'm, I'm committing my children to him and my family and my future and all of this. But the, but the money part is, is tough. And I get it. I totally get it. And that's why it's difficult to share these messages. Because there's so much manipulation, so much misunderstanding. There's so much exploitation. There's so many things that have happened historically where churches have a bad rap about what they have done with money, ministers have been terrible with money, and the whole church environment is difficult. And it's nothing new. So the nation of Israel with the priests, they used to tithe to the temple. But you must read some of the priests that were running the temple and what they were doing. It was shocking. It was so bad. But not once did God say to the nation, stop tithing. Because the tithe is not about what the temple receives. It's a personal thing that you give. And it is one of the easiest, and this is the part I love, it is one of the easiest ways for you to put God first and to mean it. When I say easiest, there's something that sits there that's like, Ugh, I don't know if I can. What about, I mean, we all have responsibilities. I have a family. I have children. I have things that I have to pay. So how do I tithe and put God first when I've got all of those? And amazingly, even with Justine and I as, as a couple, it's still a personal thing. I don't go to her and say, well, have you tithed now this month? It's between her and the Lord. But when we put God first and we, we do that, and we have been doing that now for the last six, seven months, we've been doing it really, really properly. It's amazing how everything changes because it changes your thinking and it genuinely does. So that the things that you used to think were important, you realize, but hang on, that's not important. And there are other things that are more important than that. And how am I going to get to those things? And it all happens when you put God first.
One of the interesting points that you mentioned was that of a particular attitude. The attitude being what's what's mine as a congregant is also yours, which means that I can give freely because it's not entirely mine. And this comes from understanding that God provides everything we have. So we are basically, all of us, married in community of property. What's yours is mine. What's mine is yours. But to be honest, this is a very unnatural thought. It's not natural for us to think that way. So how can we learn to submit, Warren, to that unnatural thought? That's why I think why the tithe is the baseline and the most important. Because what it does it allows your heart to change. And as soon as your heart changes, your thinking changes. So what is your heart? Obviously, it's not the, the organ that pumps the blood throughout your body. It's the core of who you are. It's where your choice lies. And that is what is going to determine the direction of your life. So when your heart changes, then you're going to look at others. You're going to look for opportunities and you're going to see that you are able to be used of God so that you can give, that others will give. And as we give to each other, that's when you enjoy the blessing of giving. And these are things that we can't change. So the the, the verse in Malachi chapter 3, that is a verse that I have had Um, as part of my sermon material six, seven months ago. But I didn't share it then because I didn't feel at the time that it was right to share from my perspective or right to receive from the congregation's perspective. And when it came up again now in the sermon material, I went and I did research again on it. I read up about it and I asked the Lord to say, Lord, is this the right time? It's the only time in the scriptures where God says, try me, test me. And I love it because that's exactly what it is. Because he knew and he still knows that it's something that we naturally are going to battle with. It's something that we're not going to be like, yeah, that makes total sense. I'm going to do it and it's easy. There's just that little like, mm, like what if? You know, what if I do this and God doesn't come through? And what is that really saying? Is the God of the universe who provides all things, but yet I'm not willing to trust him in this area. So it does. It hits hard. But that's the beautiful part is it gets us to that place of faith of where we need to trust the Lord. After the service, I reflected on it so much because it literally, like I said, I'll keep saying it, it hit home. And I realized that generosity actually is is the consequence of putting God first. It becomes so easy and you do it freely when you put God first. And just to go back to what I was able to do, I went and I looked at my budget for I have a monthly budget. I'm a very financially, you know, good person, Warren. And I looked at the budget and I said, Lord, what can I cut out of my budget to be able to achieve this 10%? Because I want to do so freely and wholeheartedly. Mm-hmm. And I was able to cut back on various things, like you said, I thought were important, but were not. Just a quick question, just to close it off. What are some of the habits do you think we can adopt as congregants, especially from our personal living and our personal giving in order to achieve generosity? So you always want to start with the basics. The basics is let's not be shy or scared about speaking about money. It is a very personal thing. And I don't think that we should ever have the fear that the church is there to pry into our personal lives. Because like I say, I don't even pry into my wife's personal finances. It's between her and the Lord. And in exactly the same way, it's always between you and the Lord. The, I feel the more anonymous, the better. It doesn't have to be, and I, I understand that, but it's that relationship is one that is going to show itself over time as to your heart and your generosity and you are blessed by it the most so what habits can you put in place 
Don't shy away from it. Let's not be scared of it. Let's find out what the scriptures truthfully say about our money and our treasures and where our heart is. And let's be serious about honoring the Lord with that. And over time, those other aspects are going to come. And we are going to rejoice when we're able to see how God is able to use our simple obedience in such in such a basic and natural and physical way. I mean, this is not a massively spiritual thing when you're talking about money. It is the whole world uses money, runs on money, but yet it has such spiritual value, which is so beautiful. And God is able to use such a basic worldly thing to teach some of the most beautiful lessons. And that's what we look forward to.